Welcome to a special edition of Bloomington Today. I'm Kaylin Clement. Thanks for joining us. We've spent quite a bit of time talking about the South Loop District over the last several months. And during today's show, we're going to take a look back at some of the projects, milestones, and goals set forth in 2013 that will ultimately help achieve the urban, walkable, mixed-use development vision city engineers have for the area. First, let's hear from city engineer Shelly Peterson as she highlights highlighted some of the project's pre-construction last spring. For the city of Bloomington, location is everything. We are a community conveniently located near downtown Minneapolis, the airport, home of the nation's largest shopping center, not to mention several major freeways. The city's South Loop District, however, remains an untapped redevelopment gem, but not for long. The vision of the South Loop District is to take this very large suburban dispersed district and bring it into a more unique um, urban district, more walkable, more pedestrian friendly, so that it'll, it'll attract uh, residents, it'll attract shoppers, it'll attract business tenants, it'll attract hotel guests because of the amenities and the uniqueness it has here. From suburban to urban, sounds simple enough, but what makes South Loop a worthy candidate for redevelopment? Over the next 30 years, 65% of the city's development and redevelopment will be in the South Loop District. That's what our projected potential is. And also, we're re uniquely situated between the two freeways, the 494, the Trunk Highway 77. We have the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport to our north, and we have a great amenity to our bordering our south, which is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Urban Refuge, which is a great recreational amenity for anyone in the district. To accomplish this renewal, the city is undertaking a variety of major infrastructure improvements. Our first project starting up this summer is going to be the Lindau Lane grade separation. We'll be starting in the first two weeks of April. You'll see our contractor, C.S. McCrossin, coming to the site. And what that is, is the lowering of Lindau Lane between Trunk Highway 77 and 24th Avenue. We'll be grade separating the road there. They'll be mobilizing in. You're going to see their traffic cones, their equipment coming on site. Preparation for the next project, the extension of Lindell Lane, began in 2012 when the Alpha office buildings were demolished to make room for the walkable, store-lined streetscapes that will soon connect 24th Avenue to 30th Avenue. That area will be more of a complete street. It'll be more multimodal for buses, bikes, walking. It'll be more of a unique neighborhood to connect the two big developments we have, which is the Mall of America and the Bloomington Central Station area, and it'll connect it in a way where it'll be pedestrian and bike friendly for people to move about and enjoy the area. On the south side of the Mall of America, a pedestrian bridge will soon be constructed. The Ped Bridge crosses Killebrew Avenue between 20th and 22nd Avenue. And it connects in from the south side, which will be an at-grade connection, which there will be an elevator and a stair up to the Ped Bridge. And on the north side, it will connect into the new Radisson Blue Hotel, into their parking ramp. Then there will be a pedestrian way that will take you directly into the mall. Finally, at the intersection of 34th Avenue and I-494, the existing interchange will be converted to a diverging diamond interchange. The diamond is going to separate kind of the right and the left turns, move them over. It's kind of a... A, a very different looking um, intersection and you'll have more free left turns because that's our most prominent movement. This is also will be enhanced safety in that area. It'll move traffic more efficiently. It, it will be the first diverging diamond in the United States with the light rail tracks going down the center. While these are all mid to long term projects for the South Loop District, detours and closures will happen from time to time. Peterson says the best way to keep your commute from being disrupted is by staying in the loop, first with a stop at the city's website. Where you can find out um, things about the district as a whole. You can also find out all about all the construction projects. We have a nifty little map that you can click on your project. It'll take you to a separate page tell, describing just that project. On there, you'll also see a tool called eSubscribe. And with eSubscribe, you can get this, this information directly sent to you on a weekly basis during the construction season, right to your email address by signing up. During the season, we will have weekly updates on lane closures, what's happening with each project in the district to make your trip to the district for work and shopping safe and secure. 
And with all of that redevelopment planned around the Mall of America, it's only fitting that the nation's largest shopping mall would unveil some big changes as well. For more than 20 years, the Mall of America proudly donned its star and ribbons logo. But times are changing, and so is MOA's logo. Mall of America is really excited to launch our new logo. As you can see, we still kept our star from our previous logo. That still remains true to Mall of America, but now it's brighter, it's more colorful, it's vibrant. The change in logo is something mall officials thought long and hard about before acting on. But at a time of significant change and growth for the Mall of America, the moment seemed right. We are doubling in size. Soon people are going to see a bigger and better Mall of America. The phase one of this approach is, is beginning, and so the new logo launch did come at the perfect time. We want to remind our guests that there is always going to be something new for them at Mall of America. MOA's new logo is a product of Minneapolis design firm Duffy and Partners. What the Mall of America really needed was not only a brand language, but a dynamic brand language. And by that I mean um, because it is so many different things to so many different segments of their audience, it needed to be flexible enough to change in some respects, uh, depending on the season, depending on uh, um, what part of the mall um, you were experiencing. So what we did is we created a brand language that was dynamic. The colors um, are a broad palette of colors. The type varies. Um, there are a number of different patterns so that it's this balance between consistency so that um, regardless of how you see it, um, how it's configured in that particular point of contact with the audience, it, it says this is the Mall of America, but it says it with a, you know, a, a, a different um, facet of its personality. Duffy founded the firm in 1984 and has designed and updated brands for hundreds of companies over the years. But working with Bloomington landmarks, like the mall, is special to him, largely thanks to his father and the building which once occupied the space now known as Mall of America. After the Twins came, he became general manager of Metropolitan Stadium. Um, and you know, because I was a huge sports fan, particularly baseball, I would go to Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington with him for virtually every home game of the Twins and then eventually the Vikings. Duffy and Partners is also responsible for the new logo for the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau, branding his childhood hangout simply central. There was often confusion. Uh, is it Bloomington, Minnesota? Is it Bloomington, Indiana? Is it Bloomington, Illinois? I, I, there are a lot of Bloomingtons. So that was something that we had to address directly. Um, we, we also, I mean, the, Bloomington has so many things going for it. Um, it's not just the Mall of America. It's not just um, the airport or certain restaurants or certain places to go and shop. It's, it's just a lot of different things. It's one of the other reasons why you need an identity that isn't just a logo. It's, it's a way of communicating all the special things about this particular brand. Big things are happening all over Bloomington, and in order to improve, we must change, and with change brings opportunity. In order to accommodate Mall of America's Phase Two expansion north toward IKEA, changes to Lindau Lane began this year. An area associated with mounds of dirt, orange construction cones, and large machinery recently is slowly but surely becoming less of a work zone and more of vision turned reality. Construction on the Lindau Lane extension began in mid-July of 2013, and in just one month, tremendous progress has been made to the area. In the last month, we've started to remove the existing pavement and some of the infrastructure. We started the preliminary grading, and we've uh, installed the water main, the sanitary sewer and storm sewer, and some of the private utilities. A portion of Lindau Lane from 24th Avenue to 22nd Avenue recently partially reopened to motorists coming and going from the Mall of America. The grade separation of Lindau Lane between 22nd Avenue and Ikea Way is just weeks from concrete pouring on the bridge deck. 
And as the project moves east across 24th Avenue, Peterson says the excitement is building. We're getting ready for a development that's coming in 2014, which will be a new um, four-story hotel that will be coming into this area. And the infrastructure we're putting in place, we're getting ready for 2020 for the projections. And in 2020, we will have 6,000 residents, 9,000 hotel guests, 35,000 employees in the district, and 115,000 mall visitors per day to serve. With such large projections of occupancy expected in the district, sewer and stormwater systems have been a focal point for construction crews during the project's early phases to ensure they're adequate to handle the increase in people and the additional roadways that are being constructed. In this area, we're installing storm sewer before there was parking lot in this area, and now there will be streets, so there wasn't adequate storm sewer to serve the runoff on the street. Uh, this will be new catch basins and manholes, and they're putting the top hat on the manhole at this time. And then as the street gets built, they'll gradually raise it up to grade where you see the top of the cast of the street. Ornamental fence foundations, along with irrigation and sidewalk installation, will soon be taking place in the district. All things, according to Peterson, that will assist in altering this suburban commercial site into something very different. Our vision is for a more urban, walkable, friendly area, so it'll attract residents, hotel guests, businesses, shoppers, by its unique assets and the atmosphere it has. And by November, as crews were beginning to wind down for the season, progress to the project was significant. Lindell Lane was once a key roadway used heavily by both motorists and pedestrians to get around the Mall of America. And although the scene here is different today, City engineer Shelley Peterson urges residents to be patient. The district is growing. In order to get ready for the growth, we need to have better infrastructure for our roads, for access for all the new businesses that we're hoping or that will be coming. It was in April of 2013 when crews began efforts to not only lower Lindell Lane 20 feet, but construct an enormous bridge deck over the top of the roadway. MOA's expansion plans will eventually bring the mall north, right up to the bridge deck, also known as the plaza. The plaza is the top of the bridge deck, which normally on the top of a bridge deck you have automobiles, which we will, but in the interim here is the front door of the mall as they build their next phase up to it. This will be more of a pedestrian area, it will be a drop off and a pickup area. There will not be parking there, it will be a pedestrian gathering area. It will have lighting, it will have landscaping. Um, for people to gather and to come in and out of the mall. The last major construction endeavor this season was the six separate concrete pours, which wrapped up in late October. As the bridge deck is now poured and we're approaching winter, they're doing their just the last few things. They're pouring the, the barriers on top, which they'll put the railings on, and the pilasters, so that that's your side and your railing of the bridge deck. They're taking the shoring down, they may be doing a little bit with the landscaping and the lighting, just things that we can do a little bit, finish up until winter starts. Just east of the new bridge, changes to the lane are taking shape in a place where motorists previously were forced to make a right or left-hand turn on 24th Avenue. Part of our construction is to extend Lindau Lane from 24th Avenue to the new 30th Avenue, which will be built in 2014. This is going to connect the district so you can connect to the 28th Avenue Park and Ride, to Bloomington Central Station, and to new businesses that are going to start to be built in 2014 along Lindau from 24th to 26th Avenue. Crosswalk construction and landscaping will continue on the extension project until the season ends. And whether we're talking about the new Diverging Diamond Interchange, the 24th Avenue Sewer Project, or the Killebrew Pedestrian Bridge, all of these projects are means to a greater end. Bloomington's vision for South Loop is to take a dispersed suburban commercial area and to turn it into a walkable urban area that will attract hotel guests, shoppers, businesses. And we want to do that because it's, the area has a unique character and the assets that are in the area. One thing city engineers taught us this year was that sometimes it's the construction projects below the surface that ultimately make the projects above ground possible. In the fall of 2013, a variety of projects will be taking place in the South Loop District. The Lindau Lane 
lowering project, the Lindau Lane extension project, the diverging diamond interchange, and the Killebrew pedestrian bridge. It is projected that two-thirds of Bloomington's growth over the next 40 years will occur inside the district. And the preparation above the ground to streets and buildings is just one piece of the redevelopment puzzle. As South Loop continues to grow, there are going to be more people working and living in the district and they want basic commodities that we're used to, turning on the faucet, flushing the toilet, and having the stuff go away. So we need to upsize the pipes that are currently in the area so that we have capacity, so that those basic simple necessities are there. When maintenance or replacement of utility pipes are needed, nine times out of ten, crews will open up what is referred to as a trench in the roadway above the pipeline to access it. But in this case, along 24th Avenue, an alternative method of construction was sought. The 24th Sanitary Sewer Project is a directional bore project, and you don't see that very frequently because it's a very expensive way to do construction. There are usually cheaper alternatives that the city can pursue. But in this particular case, with the light rail transit and the signal and the traffic and the depth of the pipe, it was necessary to look for a different alternative, and it actually is as cost effective as it would have been to uh, cut an open trench. The directional bore construction method requires two pits to be dug at either end of the pipe being replaced. The first is called the jacking pit, where 10-foot sections of new pipe are lowered in by excavator. We are upgrading the pipes in the area from 12 and 15 inch diameters to a 27 inch diameter pipe and we are using a piece of equipment that has the capacity to push 200 tons of pressure. As the new pipe slowly pushes into the earth, over at the receiving pit across 24th Avenue, crews spring into action. In the receiving pit, you see all the things that we've already installed. As we push the one pipe, it has to go someplace, so something else comes out the other end. So as we push the 27-inch Hobos pipe on the one end, we take out the 16-inch casing and auger on the other end, and we restack that, and then they also clam shell out the dirt that comes along that was inside the uh, casing pipe. According to Long, this new sanitary sewer system installed through the directional boring method will nearly triple the current capacity in the district, allowing for continued expansion of the area with limited disruption to motorists. Now let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll check out some other significant milestones that help set the wheels of change in motion as the redevelopment of the city's South Loop District drives on. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Store to door shops for and delivers groceries to hundreds of elderly adults each week. Our clients can't drive or walk very far, and they can't lift or carry bags of groceries. For 30 years, Store to Door has helped them continue to live in their own homes. Volunteers are critical to our mission by helping to take grocery orders over the phone or doing the shopping for clients at the store. If you'd like more information about Store to Door, call 651-642-1892. Welcome back, everyone. A new pedestrian safety measure was deemed necessary as traffic, both motorist and pedestrian, is expected to grow in Bloomington South Loop District. On the south side of the Mall of America, you can find restaurants, hotels, office buildings, and apartments. With that comes daily pedestrian traffic crossing Killebrew Drive, heading north to visit the nation's largest shopping mall, or the busiest transit center in the state. If anyone has ever stood out here in the South Loop District and watched pedestrians cross Killaroo Road, you'll, make, you'll notice that they don't always make the wisest of choices. And we've been extremely lucky that nobody's gotten hurt. And so we wanted to help facilitate them making a better choice. That improved choice Long spoke of is this pedestrian bridge spanning Killaroo Drive. 
The goal in mind is to ease traffic congestion along the busy corridor while keeping commuters who are on foot out of harm's way. Once the pedestrian bridge is open to pedestrian traffic, people will no longer be able to cross at grade. Um, we're going to be removing those at grade crossings and installing either fencing or pedestrian barricade to funnel people to the bridge. Brick installation on the building, which will house a staircase and elevator, can be found taking place in early September of 2013. Also, both interior and exterior framing has construction crews busy. The exterior is about 75 percent complete, the interior about 25 percent. The finished bridge will include windows, which can be opened and closed to allow for fresh air in the warmer months, and the temperature will be regulated in the cooler months to be about 20 degrees warmer than outside. Once you get, uh, arrive on the north side of Killebo Drive, you'll be inside the Radisson Blue parking ramp. There will be a marked pedestrian crosswalk throughout the ramp, and it will take you across uh, the front door to the Radisson Blue, so you can either go inside and cross up and use their sky bridge, or you can continue following the pedestrian path and cross underneath the bridge and to the front door of the Mall of America. The pedestrian bridge is set to open sometime in late October, with completed barricades at previous street-level crosswalks finished before the 2013 Thanksgiving holiday. Exciting changes taking place in the city's South Loop District, truly ushering in a time of redevelopment and renewal. And in November, city leaders gathered with project officials to celebrate the completion of the bridge, marking the first redevelopment project to be completed in the South Loop District. Pedestrians will no longer have to battle the busy intersections along Killebrew Drive in order to get to the Mall of America. Those traveling through the area were sure to notice changes beginning to take place south of the Mall of America starting in April of 2013, when construction crews began mobilizing in the area. By July, the steel support beams were in place and the structure was beginning to resemble a bridge. Just one month later, we were able to walk on the unfinished bridge. And come November, this is a day of celebration. You know, this bridge, it's interesting, and I think people can see and understand why that it can help uh, transport, they say, up to 1,500 people a day across uh, Killebrew Drive here to get them into the mall back and forth, and that's only good. They'll be able to cross this road now in a safe fashion doing it that way. But I think one of the other benefits that people kind of don't think about is that it's really going to help traffic flow in this area. When you don't have people needing to conflict with the traffic crossing the roads, the traffic will move more safely, faster, and all for the better of everyone, so that's all good. On November 7th, along with city leaders, representatives from the Radisson Blue, the Mall of America, the Minnesota Department of Transportation, and the contracting company gathered as Mayor Winstead officially opened the pedestrian bridge to traffic. Congratulations to all. Let's use the bridge. The bridge is completely covered and partially temperature controlled with both elevator and stair access on the south side of Killebrew Drive. As the South Loop District continues to grow, traffic along this corridor is expected to increase to 39,000 vehicles per day. Pedestrians are being asked to no longer cross the road at street level. Temporary barriers will soon be replaced with permanent fencing, which will encourage the use of the new bridge. Shortly after the completion of the pedestrian bridge, Bloomington became home to the state's third diverging diamond interchange, located at I-494 and 34th Avenue. Just the third interchange like this in Minnesota, and the only in the country with light rail transit running through it. It's no doubt this innovation in traffic control is new to many. We haven't had a lot of feedback at this time, but the feedback that we have had has been mixed, some positive, some negative. Um, from observing the intersection, we can see that a lot of the regular drivers from the taxis to the park and fly and those that go back and forth through here from their lots to the airport, they're maneuvering it very well. And as motorists are first encountering this interchange, navigation education is in order. 
When motorists enter a diverging diamond interchange, the lanes will cross over to the left side of the roadway at a controlled intersection. This type of interchange design helps eliminate crashes that are typically associated with left turn movements by allowing the left turns onto the freeway to occur without uh, stopping. It also allows left turns to occur without crossing the path of oncoming vehicles. For drivers moving through the interchange without entering the freeway, traffic will eventually shift back to the right side of the road at another controlled intersection. It is estimated that overall, traffic delays will be cut up to 60% now that the DDI is operational. Pedestrians and bicyclists, there's a place for you in this design as well. Pedestrians and bicyclists to navigate through the interchange will use the sidewalk on the east side of 34th Avenue. City statutes allow for bicyclists to be on the sidewalk, but bicyclists can, and we have observed bicyclists also using the road uh, facilities to cross through the interchange. The Diverging Diamond Interchange at 34th Avenue and I-494 opened to motorists in late October after being fully closed to commuters for five weeks. Today, the project is substantially done. The items remaining for the contractor include some miscellaneous uh, additions of signing and pavement markings. The contractor will also be working to complete installation of uh, fiber optic uh, cabling and testing of that cable, and then also uh, labeling of wiring, and then the contractor will be back in the spring to finish up with uh, remaining landscaping items. As the City South Loop District continues to grow, this innovation in traffic design will help better meet the needs of the traveling public. But until you're familiar with the DDI, slow down a little bit, follow your pavement markings, follow your signs, follow the signals, and work your way through it. Maybe take the time to drive it a couple times. And that's all the time we have for today. To get more information on city projects, parks, road construction, and events, visit the city's website. If you saw something today you'd like to see again or send to a friend, visit the city's YouTube channel, accessible right from the city's homepage, to check out these short, single segments. That and so much more is online right now at www.ci.bloomington.mn.us. If Facebook or Twitter isn't for you, Sign up for eSubscribe to have updates sent right to your email or cell phone. I'm Kaylin Clement and you're watching Bloomington Today, a presentation of the City of Bloomington's Communications Division. Thanks so much for joining us.